How's everybody doing today? This is Chuck from Mining with Uncle Chuck. I hope you're well. I just got in another nice little stack here of ASIC miners, but this is for another day. I just got my hands on the new paid overclocks from T-Swift and his devs for the Ice River KS0 Pro. If you watched my last episode, I did a complete beginner's guide on the setup of this thing, and we talked about the overclocks. Well, I have my upgraded power supply, and I'm gonna take you through step by step. We'll talk about the changes and what's happened with the overclocks. We are gonna dive in and get this thing flashed up. So today's video, we are gonna go through the complete process of flashing the Ice River KS0 Pro with the paid overclocks from T-Swift and his devs. Now this method of flashing the paid overclocks is the same process, say if you have a KS1, 2, and or 3. But one big change today, now my last video that I did, I guess about five or six days ago, on the beginner setup of the KS0, we were expecting firmware with overclocking these approximately up to 360 giga hash. But talking to T-Swift today, he said that they have had a number of issues with stability of the overclock firmware with many of the KS0 Pros they've been testing on. Now he's made mention that it is due to kind of inconsistent build quality by Ice River. So the paid overclocks that I got today are for 280 giga hash. Now, when they have a more stable version, they will, you'll be able to upgrade that when it's ready. So I would recommend, if you plan on doing this, get the 230 watt power supply. Today's firmware upgrade, if you've got the original KS Zeros, you can get away with using a 180 watt power supply like I have here. I wouldn't do that. I would probably just go ahead and upgrade to the 230 watt power supply. That is if you're even interested in overclocking your KS0 Pro. Now, who knows? We may see some free overclocks in the future. Nobody knows. Uh, you know, something else I wanted to mention here is that I'm not getting paid anything from T-Swift or his devs to do this video or to talk about it. I paid for the overclocks just like you're gonna do as well. So I will put his contact information down below the video. If you wanna reach out to him, just say Chuck sent you. Enough said, let's dive in and get this thing flashed up. Forgot to mention, I swapped out the factory power supply with the 230 watt one and got it plugged into the KS0 Pro and we've got power again. So I've gone ahead and I've logged into the dashboard of my Ice River KS0 Pro. Now I assume you know how to get to this point if you watched my prior video on the beginner setup. If you haven't, I'll put the link for that down below. Now when you go to reach out to T-Swift, he's going to ask you for your miner's MAC address. And that's what I have highlighted down here at the bottom. Type that in and send that to T-Swift via Telegram along with your payment. And when your firmware is ready, he will send it back to you via Telegram. Now. It's a larger file. What I ended up doing is I just used my Google Drive account on my actual mobile phone. I was able to simply head back to my computer, open it up, and then click download, and it went to the desktop of my actual computer itself. Once you end up with the zip file of the firmware from T-Swift in the desktop of your computer, unzip it, you're gonna end up with a folder. Click on the folder, it will open up, and you're gonna see all of these files inside. Click on the README folder, and that's what I have down here below. Now the next step, what does it say? here restore the miner to factory settings in the web interface or by pressing and holding the reset button allow the miner to restart so i'm going to head back to the dashboard of my ice river ks0 pro what we want to do next is come down here to the right in our dashboard of our miner and we want to click on restore factory settings confirm factory reset click on ok give the miner a moment or two don't be in a hurry we'll just let it sit here for a second operation succeeded click on ok now the next step, we're gonna come over here to the left where it says firmware upgrade and click on it. Light blue box here on the right where it says select file, click it. Now what we're looking for is the file in our desktop that we already unzipped that's got the firmware in it. We've got all of our different hash rate options, but we are looking for the init file. When you find it, it's right here. Click on it and open that up. Next step, click on upgrade. 
Again, this could take a moment or so, so just be patient. I'm going to kind of fast forward here a little bit. Operation succeeded. Click OK. Now it says restart mining machine. Click OK. Operation succeeded. Again, just be patient. Let the miner sit for at least three minutes, and I'll come back with you. Now, what you can do is you can come up here to the left, and we're going to click on home again. There we go. We're back to the dashboard of the miner. If you look down here at the bottom left, before moving forward, you should see here it says image in it. So we know right now that we've been successful in flashing that first file to our KS0 Pro. So next step, head back to firmware again. Click on the blue box where it says select file. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bring up that readme file again. And we'll take a look down here. It says apply pool settings. I'm going to do that after. I'm going to be more focused on getting the firmware flashed on here first. And we'll do the pool settings after that. Use the following sequence. 280G underscore L equals 280 giga hash. 270G underscore L equals 270G. So obviously I am going to try the max giga hash at this point in time. So we are looking for 280G underscore L. We'll confirm that 280G underscore L. So I am going to click on this file here. Click open. We're going to click on update. Just let the miner sit as we did before. Operation succeeded. That took about a minute, I guess. So we're going to click on OK. And we are going to restart the miner again. So click on OK. Operation succeeded. We're just going to let this thing sit again. I'm going to kind of fast forward and come back with you. Okay, I let the miner sit another couple minutes. Come up here to the left, and I'm going to refresh, or you, you could do it from your taskbar as well, too. And there we go. Well, now you have the T-Swift. Obviously, you have all of his information in the left here, and we can see down here at the bottom, Discord, and we definitely know we have a different file on here. The last step is probably the easiest. Again, you already know how to do that because you watched the prior video on the beginner setup. So I'm simply going to head into minor settings, delete all this information and get back with you. I'll put mine in here. Now I have all of my pool information in here. I'm using Humpool today, my wallet address. I am going to click save. Operation succeeded. You know the drill. We have to wait for the miner to connect to the mining pool. So we'll click on home. Now I'm going to bring that readme file up one more time. And one of the things that it does recommend here is it's saying to change the fan speed to 100% and observe hash rate, later decrease the fan speed. Now, I should have done that the last step, but I'm going to go into mining settings, come down here to fan speed, and it was already at 100, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure that saved, click operation succeeded, it says, and go back to home. Now, I'm just going to let the miner sit, and I'll be back with you when we have some hash rate showing in the dashboard. Okay, while I had the video paused, the KS0 Pro got very hot and shut down, and we lost connection. Now, I reached out to T-Swift, and he made mention that the most important thing is to, where it says here in the readme, unscrew and remove both of the side panels of the miner to ensure that airflow can pass through the internal parts of the machine. It is also recommended to have an additional fan or airflow pushing the air through the side openings. Now, I did one, two, three, and four, and we looked at the differences in the hash rates, but I guess I should have scrolled down here more to read the bottom. But if it was that important, it should be priority number one at the top. Now they have rewritten this and he sent me this. So now it is very, very clear. And if I was to open the firmware, I would not make this mistake again. I'm going to go through the process, take the side panels off, try and get the hash rate out of this. So we're going to move forward. Bear with me. Okay, so we're going to rock some MacGyver 101 here. We need to take this screw out, this this one and this one on this side, we are going to do the same here, 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 and here. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll get back with you. Okay, so I've got the side panels off of the KS0, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig up an external fan. Not the USB, but make sure we get a decent amount of airflow through this. Now remember, I wouldn't recommend doing this because you are going to void your warranty. So. Obviously, the big warning here, go ahead at your own risk, but let's see if we can get this thing up and rocking. Okay, I've got the ultimate jank MacGyver going on here with my KS0 Pro. I've got the front 
and the back panel off. I've taken my USB fan and I'm making sure that the airflow is going through the miner. I can completely feel it on this side. Mine, the video quality, my regular equipment is actually at my other building for this section. And if this doesn't work, I've got the big guns here. We will see if we can get this thing up and hashing without shutting down. So I'm back at the login screen for my miner and I'll put the information in here very quickly. Okay, and we are back in the dashboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let the miner sit for a moment and we're gonna see how things make out. We're gonna double check to make sure, well, you know what, we're gonna change this. We're gonna put it to 100, click save, operation succeeded. We'll go back to our main screen here and I'll be back with you in a moment. We do have some accepted shares. So far, again, it's looking pretty hot. So I've got the big fan going in to the actual KS0 Pro. So we have got a huge amount of airflow coming out of the other end and we'll head back to the, the desktop one more time. So my KS0 Pro has been up and mining for a bit here. Fans are still at 100% and I've got that big external fan blowing that cool air from one side to the other. And we have not got above 168 giga hash. Yeah, not quite that elaborate. Anyway, I'm back with you and I decided to take a few days off and think about it. So I kind of came up with this as it says, Uncle Chuck's jank flout. Now what I did is I just repurposed the box that the KS0 Pro came in. As you can see, I kind of left the bottom flap, I took the miner, I traced around it, and then I cut a hole out, folded the flaps over, sealed it up with packing tape, and on the back side, what I did is I bought this AC Infinity fan. Now, this is an 18 watt fan. You will need power because it just plugs right into the wall and I kind of traced around it, indented a bit, cut it out, put the screws through, boom, plug this thing in, and it moves a ton of air. Now, I know this is a lot to go through, but you know what, when I touch this thing, it's actually cool, and heat is no longer an issue. Now, as most of you know, we got the fans on the bottom here. When we use our USB fans, we sit them on the top. Typically, that's because there's holes over here. Most of you know that, and that's what helps dissipate the heat from the actual heat sinks. This is not needed. I actually tried a version of this where I had it mounted to the front. It made zero difference in the temperature because this other fan that I've got, this AC Infinity fan, and I'll put a link down below if you want to attempt to do this uh, arts and craft project. Now you could take this fan and put it directly behind the miner and might do the job for you. But what I wanted to do is focus on more direct airflow. Air comes in, goes into the box, creates the pressure, kind of like a wind tunnel, and forces it through the KS0 Pro. Now, in doing the same thing with just putting the fan behind it, there's a huge difference in the amount of air that's coming through. So that focused airflow makes all the difference in the world. This is blowing a lot of air through here. Again, this is absolutely cool to touch. So yeah, you, you definitely can't cook an egg on this. So what we'll do is we'll head back to the desktop and we'll take a look at our hash rate. We're back in the dashboard of the miner. As you can see, the fan speed's only at 50% with my jank flow setup. We're gonna head back to home. Now, as you can see, we're sitting at 271 giga hash. And this is with the 260 giga hash firmware file. So 260 dash underscore L. Now the 280 didn't work no matter what I tried. The 270 file, I was only ending up with about 268 giga hash. And the 260 giga hash file, as I said, which I'm using right now, I end up anywhere between 265 and 271 at a maximum. So this is the file I am gonna stick with myself. Now I wanted to add, we're sitting at 129.8 watts at the wall with a 260 giga hash file. So that's not too bad. And I don't have the USB fan plugged into this thing. A number of guys have seen mixed results with the paid overclock. So you might see higher or lower than me. But if you wanna add that external fan, which I highly recommend, you're looking at 18 watts there and that's gonna factor into your overall efficiency as well. If you're still interested, I will put T-Swift's contact in 
information down below the video in the comments. You can see it up here in the left. Just tell them Chuck sent you. That's it for today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you like the video. I'm going to be back with you real soon. I've got a big giveaway and a contest coming up, so make sure you tune in. Peace out.